This video is for Tommy. Tommy, hello. Miss Montgomery, hello too. I don't know if you're still monitoring Tommy's email, but if you are, hello. This is Eleanor from childhood and stuff. I'm still on the cruise ship, but we're not moving anymore. And my room smells like potatoes, but that's my fault since I spilled mashed potatoes on the floor. They said they couldn't spare anyone to come clean it up, which is understandable, but I still wish it didn't smell like potatoes. I don't smell like potatoes, just the room does. So, the real reason I am sending you this video is to let you know that I will obviously not be returning from the boat in time for prom. So we cannot attend prom together. And I wanted to give you permission to ask Jessica to prom. Because it really seems like you want to go with her. Miss Montgomery, don't worry. Your son is not a cheater. Tommy and I are not dating. There are no romantic feelings between us. None. Seriously. Um, but yeah, I can't go anymore. And you should still go. I'm not someone you want to go with. Even if that person is Jessica. Jessica's fine, sort of. Sorry. I don't know why I said that. I'll edit that out. Yes, go to prom with Jessica. She's great. And you two obviously have the hots for each other. <laughs> um, I see you guys together, like, all the time, especially after band. You two seem to have really connected since you switched to bassoon. Hmm. Um, yeah, she's super nice. We sat next to each other in chem last year and she had a good vibe. Oh my gosh, funny story super quick. One time during a test, she totally fell asleep. It was so funny. I've seriously never seen anyone do that before. And like, during a test. At least it wasn't an AP test. She had like, a bit of drool too. So, you can ask Jessica if you want to, and I will release you from our prom pact. Oh, Miss Montgomery, Tommy and I made a pact in sixth grade when we were both losers that we would go to prom together if we weren't in a relationship with other people or in a relationship with each other, which I know you teach us about before, Miss Montgomery. You kind of say it a lot. Could you imagine? Barf. I'll edit that. So, prom. Sorry, I feel like I'm saying the word prom a lot. Do you ever just say a word so much it doesn't feel like a word anymore? Prom. Prom. Tommy, prom. Sorry, I guess the boat's getting to me. Boat brain. Um, I should go soon. But, Tommy, if you don't go to prom with Jessica, or if prom doesn't happen at all, we could do like our own little prom in my dad's basement or something. Remember when we used to rollerblade down there? We could do that too. Well, actually he got it carpeted. You know, I'll talk to him. There's this dance instructor on the boat leading video lessons and I've been following along and learning. So there's that. Think about it, no pressure. Just think about it. I think it could be a fun thing to do once I'm out of this potato room and off the boat. Let me know, buddy old pal. Bye, Tommy. Bye, Miss Montgomery. Bye, Tommy. Sorry, I already... I'm gonna start over. Three, two, one.
this started out as a vacation. The first one since the twins were born. They're four now, so you could imagine. It was the getaway we were longing for, and now we can't get away from it. Having twins was a test on our marriage. <laughs> now lock yourself in a cruise ship cabin with your spouse for longer than expected with no access to the tiki bar. That's a test. <sighs> we FaceTime the kids every day. My mother has them, thank God. Imagine we had hired someone to take care of them. But still, a long weekend is one thing. 14 days is a whole other thing. My mother is 68. Four-year-olds are so much work. They wake up in the middle of the night because they have to go potty or because of a bad dream or just because they want to snuggle you. And I just miss my babies. <laughs> I'm going crazy. <laughs> no, I am crazy. <laughs> they don't understand why we aren't back yet. Explain quarantine to a pair of four-year-olds. Explain a virus or why we stay on this boat and not get off and that we aren't sick, but we can't get off, and that we might have it, but don't worry, we don't have it. When we FaceTime, the kids cry. Then I cry. My husband cries. My mother cries. And my poor mother is left with them crying. She has to answer all their questions at bedtime. She has to tell them that we don't know when mommy and daddy are coming back. And then deal with the fallout. She tells me not to worry. That we're going to get through this. I need to stay strong. <laughs> that the kids are alright. My mom is still being my mom and a grandma. <laughs> I, I feel like I can't breathe. The virus is making me feel this way. And I don't even have it. I don't think. Never. Never would you believe you'd ever hear the words I'm about to say. But it's so easy to say them now that I can't actually see you. I wonder why. Anyway, since I can't talk to you right now, that means I'll have to try to telepathically send you what I'm feeling and hope that mother-daughter connection comes through. Not that we're usually connected. I've been too busy for that. Too distracted with other things I thought were more important. Too... selfish. But every time I've needed you, you've always been there. So here goes my best try. The day I departed for this cruise, I pushed the pause button and escaped from my captives. My AP courses, finishing my senior year when everyone should know we've all checked out by spring break, and you. And I was looking forward to freedom. So why is it that these things I was happy to temporarily leave behind are the things I want the most now? And now I'm held captive on a ship with a lot of people I don't know. So, hear those words, Mama, and I hope you can feel them. What I want is you. I want to be home. I'd gladly accept you kicking me out of the kitchen because I'm in the way more than I'm helping. And I would give you a personal invitation to embarrass me by joining in with my friends like you usually do when we start to spontaneously sing and dance to our favorite songs. I want to laugh with you, even though what you think is funny is actually corny. Like when he told me about the ever pretentious Mrs. Goff, who's trying to introduce Mr. Peabody, a guest pianist who's about to play for a crowd in church. And instead she said, and now Mr. Playbody will pee for us. I was too cool to laugh with you, but then you started laughing and I couldn't hold back as much as I tried. I miss your laugh. 
When I get home, I want you to repeat every annoying cliche you've ever said to me because they're all replaying in my head right now. Worrying will never change the outcome. Put your positive pants on. Will this matter a year from now? I never admitted it to you, but I kind of like those cliches. I even find myself repeating them to my friends. But for some reason, I can't tell you that. Sometimes when I want to say the right thing, I don't. There's this stubborn thing inside me that I just can't always say what I mean. But right now, while you're not here, I want to say this. And I hope wherever you are right now, you can feel it. I'm sorry I never told you before just how proud I am to have you as my mother. I love you. Hello? Hello? Are you there? I keep seeing glimpses of you out of the corner of my eye. A flash. A flicker. A sense of something nearby. A presence. A friendly presence. At least I hope you're friendly. I've been cooped up in this tiny room for 12 days now and you haven't been unfriendly yet so I'm going to be optimistic. The other day, was it yesterday? Two days ago? What is time anymore? My watch went missing. It was on my bedside table and then this morning I found it on top of my closet. Was that you? Are you playing games with me? I noticed you the second night of quarantine. The Wi-Fi was out. <laughs> Nobody was telling me anything. I have nobody to contact here. My chest, it got all tight. I couldn't breathe. <laughs> I couldn't think. <laughs> Everything was spiraling out of control. I was, I was so alone. <laughs> oh. <laughs> but then I, I felt a presence and I, I looked up and I couldn't see anybody. But I, I felt you. And I knew at least somebody would be there for me. I've been too nervous to talk to you. What if you float away and I never get to feel your presence again? I think I'll call you Clarice. My friendly little ghost companion, Clarice. It's nice to meet you. What have you got here? Oh God, did you die in this room? In this bed? People die on cruise ships. They, they just toss them overboard. Oh, did they toss you overboard, Clarice? Will they toss me overboard? Am I gonna die in this cruise ship? Is that why you're here? To tell me, Clarice, to let me know that? Oh, I don't wanna die in this cruise ship. Spend my last hours in this 20 square foot room with crappy meals delivered to my door. <laughs> this room is basically a coffin, isn't it? <laughs> oh, so much for a, a nice solo trip to the Bahamas. <laughs> I can't believe I spent my credit card points on this. <sighs> no, no. You're right, Clarice. I'll be fine. I'm, I'm, I'm young, healthy. I don't have to worry about this. Just 
boredom. Boredom and talking to ghosts. <laughs> I think I like you, Clarice. I hope you'll stick around. Keep hiding my watch. I'll keep finding it. When I finally get out of this stupid room, I hope you'll come back with me to the real world. The real world. What even is that anymore? Is this real? Are you real? Am I real? Hey, have you seen my watch? It's one of those fitness ones. Real chunky, bright blue bands, and I know you're gonna say it's probably in my room somewhere. I mean, it has to be in my room somewhere, doesn't it? It's not like we've been ashore recently. <laughs> but the, uh, the watch band gets a little itchy sometimes, and so I like to take it off places. And I, uh, I do like to walk around the ship. I mean, at home I like to run. I'm actually training for a marathon. Half marathon. Cancelled now. But did you know that you can't run here? Like, anywhere on the boat. Even before the quarantine. Did you know that? It's like a law or something. You can't run on boats. So what are you going to do if you can't run? You're gonna walk. That's what. And, and anyway, the ship staff, the captain, or whoever, they say it's okay to walk as long as you don't touch. As long as you don't interact with anybody or anything. Six feet, right? And most people are too afraid to come out of their cabin, so I can pretty much walk anywhere, and it's fine. You know how most people do 10,000 steps a day? Do you wanna know what I do? I do 20. 20,000 every single day. And do you know how long it's been since I missed a day? Four years. I, I can actually tell you the exact number of days. There's an app that, this app keeps track of it, and it says, oh, whoa. It says 1,499 days. That's my streak. And if I don't find my watch, it's going to break. It's gonna break the streak because there's no, there's no other way to put your steps in there. And I know 1,500 is just a number, but it's 1,500. And if I don't find my watch, it's not going to count my steps. And if it doesn't count my steps, I'm not gonna get my streak. And if I don't get my streak, then what am I even doing here, huh? Wandering around? What am I supposed to be then? The official cruise ship ghost haunting the halls like some third-rate Harry Potter character. Oh, I'm sorry, I'm just a bit... The streak, you know? This place does feel haunted sometimes. Do you ever feel that? Like, I'm walking on the deck and I can hear these voices. People on balconies below me talking or crying or sometimes singing but I can never make out exactly what they're saying, why they're crying. Ugh, the ship is spooky. This whole, I don't know, situation is spooky. Very act one of the zombie movie, and I don't like zombie movies. But my watch, my streak, my 20,000 steps, I know it's dumb, but it's normal. And I need normal. I need my watch. It's chunky and blue. Meh, I stole this. I'm trying not to steal everything right now. I'm changed. I am. I just feel like a little depressed and I think to myself, maybe I would feel better if I had your ring. Don't worry, I'm washing my hands. Everything is fine. It wasn't even a real diamond anyway. I wonder if she knows. Maybe I should tell her. Look, I'm having a hard time right now. Just leave me my little vices. You don't need that coat. Or that leather handbag. Or that chair. My wardrobe has doubled in size. You can see people about to come up to me when they see me in their clothes, and then they don't. Don't want to get too close, maybe. Or maybe they don't need it as much as I need it. I need it all. Give me your everything. Who knows what tomorrow brings? I was doing really well too. I was calm. 
I wasn't stealing things. I had a program. I was sticking to it too, and then, well, life likes to throw curveballs, and I was never good at baseball. I stole home once, but they asked for it back. <laughs> Sorry, bad joke. Look, we all lose people. I just want something in return. Like lots of stuff in yeah, overall in bulk, maybe it won't make me feel any better, but it makes me feel a little good at first. That's the problem, isn't it? Because I hate myself for taking it, but also, look at that. That's pretty. And tomorrow, I won't like it as much as today, maybe, but I can find something else pretty. Look at you. You've got all kinds of things, don't you? Just... Don't look away too long, because I'm going to take some of those things, okay? Don't say I didn't warn you. <laughs> oh, look how scared you look. You're hilarious. Relax. You don't need any of this stuff. I do. I need it all. All of it. me again, the Magnificent Mysterio. Day four at sea and they've canceled all public gatherings. You don't know what this means to me. I'm a cruise magician. I should be doing magic, but I can't do magic without an audience. 10 minutes ago, I made the Ace of Spades appear in my state room's mini fridge. But was that magic? No because no one saw it, except me, and I know how I did it. There was no one to be impressed, no one to shout, Woo! or ha, or Mysterio, here's my phone number, I'm in love with you, which used to happen all the time. I mean, I'm the magnificent Mysterio. I was so excited to be here. Six months of cruising around the Caribbean, performing magic, for all the different passengers, from the retirees, the elderly, the grandparents. I never imagined I'd be quarantined in my own room with coronavirus. I thought we'd be like every other cruise and just get norovirus. I just made this thingamajig appear in my hand. If anyone were here to see it, they'd be amazed. They'd be awestruck. But I know I keep this little thingamajig up in my sleeves at all times. And then when I need to go ahead and impress someone, I just roll into the palm of my hand and, well, present it. That's all it is. Nothing amazing. No magic. No electricity. Just practice a shuttle pass and long sleeves. It's got me thinking. If I can't do magic, am I still a magician? Am I still magnificent? Am I still Mysterio? Hello, sir, madam. Do you like magic? I want you to think of a card. Any card. Got one? Good. Huzzah! Was this... Your card? No answer. Can you believe this? No answer. When I strolled around the Lido deck doing this for people, they would erupt in applause. I give up. Stop calling me Mysterio. My real name's Ned. I'm 28. I'm single. And I still have student debt from going to the theater school. I started doing magic because I had a hard time connecting with people. Magic gave me this persona, this alter ego that I could use to face the world, when inside I never was that confident. I was just looking for validation. Boy, does it feel good just to be honest like that. I mean, this is me, world. I mean, warts and all. Hold on a second. I think I just mean my ego disappear. That's gotta be the most impressive thing I ever made disappear. And I never saw it coming. I might be the greatest magician of all time. 
I'm back, baby! Mysterio out! Ah. Hi, friends, fans, family, far and wide. When Grandma Marilyn first asked me, do you want to go on a cruise? I thought of shrimp buffets. I love all you can drink virgin pina coladas. I thought of a pool slide with 16 loops. I thought the scene in Trip Beverly Hills where they eat caviar on the yacht. Or on 30 Rock when Tracy uses someone else's luxury liner to throw a party and the cops kick them off. A less obscure reference, I thought of the love boat, which coincidentally, I watched as a small child with my grandma Marilyn while eating Italian ices and dreaming of the day they'd be free with a purple wristband on board of my very own cruise heaven, the Duchess Almond Ruby, where I am recording this SOS message to all of you. Because friends, fans, family, far and wide, I'm here to tell you, the shrimp is still a little frozen. The poolside gives me motion sickness, and the pina coladas, the pina coladas, they taste like someone punched plastic by mixing it with cotton candy and shame. You do not want that drink. You do not want it. It's an, and also it's, it's an abomination. It's worse than the musical episode of Grey's Anatomy, which I pretend to hate but secretly love and watch at least once a month. And just when I thought things couldn't get any worse, they told us we couldn't leave the boat. We're quarantined for our safety. At first I thought more time to read, to work on my comic book, to sit and think about life. Maybe imagine my own amusement park or think about the memoir I've been meaning to write since first grade. It was simpler time. Then, then, friends, fans, family, far and wide, I'm here to tell you, Grandma Marilyn ran out of her special perfume. The perfume that makes me think of warm cookies, fresh cut flowers, with a hint of mustiness, like one mothball in a pleasant cedar closet. Now friends, now fans, now family far and wide, she just smells like herself. So now this quarantine for our safety feels like out of the frying pan into the fire situation. What about the safety of my nose? My dear sweet nasal passages that have been through so much in my short life. What about them? Grandma Marilyn, she just... She just smells like an actual 96 year old lady. Which smells like, honestly, what smells like? Grandma, how are you? I've missed you. It wouldn't hurt to just call one more time. Hi, this is Eleanor Acklin calling from room 9255. I'm sorry to be bothering you again, but I was wondering if you had any updates. Yes, thank you, but I knew all about that. The captain was quite clear earlier, and I'm well up to date with virus information and quarantine details. I was actually calling about the menu update. Uh, uh -huh, gotcha. Yes, the menu for dinner? Well, according to the itinerary, tonight is formal night and usually the quality of the meal reflects on the quality of the attire. And let me tell you, I'm wearing this gorgeous, lobster-worthy outfit. <laughs> you know, I never really go to Marshalls because I hate waiting on lines, but something told me that if I just went in there, I would find this beautiful... In the wrong direction on one way street. Get of course. No. No, I I completely understand the severity of the situation. It's not my intention to waste your time. No, I absolutely appreciate everything the staff has done. I just wanted to check upon the formal night menu. Okay. Deliveries will start with the fifth floor at five PM. 
I had selected late dining, but no, it's okay. It's fine. By the time you get to the ninth floor where the interior cabins are, it might as well be late dining anyways. <laughs> Wait, before you go, tell me what's being served. No, let me guess. Prime rib. No, 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 no. I'm going with my gut here. Lobster. Yeah. Is it lobster? Important factors in crime detection is catching a criminal. Oh. Of course. No, I, I, I completely get it. We're quarantined. And it's a pandemic. And for the safety of ourselves and for the safety of others, we don't have access to the rest of the ship. And everyone should stay in their cabins. <laughs> you know, my mom told me I should have sprung out for an exterior cabin. If you're gonna go on vacation like a crazy person, you might as well have a window or a balcony. I laughed at her when she told me an interior cabin would make me crazy. It's just a week, I said. <laughs> and it's so much cheaper, I reasoned. But now I know that my mom was right. And I hate it when my mom was right. I am going crazy. Crazy without sunlight. Crazy without human companionship. Crazy without anything to look forward to so forgive me for still clinging on to the small joys of cruise life that i still have because 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 i should be going to the nude collector's thomas kincaid sale in the art gallery or playing bingo in the things lounge or or attending the live acupuncture demonstration in the promenade but instead i get to watch the life and legacy of thomas kincaid on my television play bingo on my phone and perform self acupuncture on myself with the safety pins that's pinning my evening gown to my bra no, that's not, that's, that's not a threat. I never attended the self-demonstration. So with my luck, you know, I probably paralyzed myself. And when someone finally finds my immobilized body, my bra straps would already be showing. I'm sorry. I'm, I'm, I'm so sorry. I'm being so selfish. No, I'm, I'm safe. I'm healthy. I... I have the unlimited movie package and free Wi-Fi. Could you forgive me? Uh, aha, uh -huh, gotcha. Yes. Thank you, and again, I'm, I'm so sorry. No, I didn't. I swear I didn't. Yes, you're right. I had no right to touch your possessions. I get that. Please don't. You don't need to call anyone, the captain or the purser, or whoever. I can explain. Take a second to look in your purse. Please? Yeah, see? It's your wallet. With all the money in it, all the credit cards, identification, everything is there. I get how you're confused. Yes, I know you've been searching for it. I know because I took it. I stole your wallet out of your purse three days ago. You had no idea it was me because, well, I'm decent at my job. And cruise ships are pretty easy pickings. Crazy. First time I get caught, just now, I was actually trying to give you your stuff back. Oh, okay. I get it. You have to call somebody. I won't try to run. Where am I going to go? Just for the record, I'm sorry. I know it really put a black mark on your vacation when I stole it. I'm sure the theft, along with the quarantine, has made this a really bad trip for you. Like I said, sorry. Why? To tell you the truth, it's a living. I'm not proud of it, but... Put spread on the table, and like I said, people on cruise ships. Oh, you mean why was I trying to give it back? 
That's a tougher question. I hadn't planned on it, not before the quarantine. I mean, I've got this kind of system that I've developed, contacts at the ports, ways to fence the stuff so it doesn't hang around for long. It's a business, sad as it sounds. That doesn't answer your, look, why don't you just go ahead and call somebody? We don't need to stretch this out. No, I don't have any stuff on me anymore. I'm clean. You were the last one. I snuck everything else back. It was because I began to feel like it, you know, I couldn't keep taking stuff. I couldn't unload it. The quarantine made me stop and sit and look around. People are scared. You could see it in their eyes, this unseen thing, this virus. They don't know if it's going to get them or if it already has. I mean, they thought that they were coming to someplace sunny and you know, carefree, safe. And now, all of a sudden, this thing snuck up on them. I just couldn't shake feeling like, look, I steal stuff for a living. I used to. And I figured out a way to be all right with that. Other people had more than me. They didn't really need what I took from them. I made it right in my head. But with this whole quarantine thing, actually having time to look at the people, I started feeling, I couldn't shake feeling like I was a sickness myself. And I couldn't live with that. You're, you're not gonna call? I deserve it, are, are you sure? <laughs> All right. I will. Goodbye, thanks. I, I will. I'll keep my hands clean. Stop it! Let go of me! You have germs! Ew! Ew! Let go of me! But you don't understand. I'm not one of them. One of the, you know, the unwashed, the uncared for, the weak of immune system. And the overall, gross, the unlimited buffet hogs, the, the ugh, what's not to understand? I'm going to be absolutely fine, absolutely fine. I got every vaccine on time. I go to the doctor once a year on precisely the same day for an annual checkup. I eat an apple a day. I start with clear bonds once a week and I squeeze my own oranges for juice every morning. I exercise three times a week using a regime personally tailored for my body's uniques from a trainer at the School of Physical Perfection at an Ivy League university. So, this quarantine? It's just ridiculous. It is not meant for people like me. People who take their health seriously, with a capital S. People who treat their bodies with, with the care and, 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 and even over care. Too much care. I probably care too much for my body. I think too much about. And the point is, I don't belong here. I'm not a quarantine type of person. I'm above the need for a quarantine. And I wasn't stealing anything. Those that are rubber boats, yeah, those are for everyone. For general use, like a water fountain at a public park. But I mean, I wouldn't actually use a water fountain at a public park because, you know, germs. And who knows if that water has been sterilized appropriately. No. I only drink the best. Perrier all the way, baby. None of that Lacroix knockoff water or that Brita filter stuff. Perrier all the way, all the time, all the how, all the... Oh, really? A, a, a security camera? That's, that's how you, uh... <clears throat> no, no. Just, uh... Something stuck in my throat. Probably the remains of a raw carrot, you know. I only eat my veggies raw to preserve the vitamins and the health and the benefits of... The brick? That's... that's what you, uh... That's what you call the cell? Well, in that case, do you have any Perrier?
Hey, Janie. It's Becca. Just calling you back after our last convo, because I, I figured you wanted an answer. So, yeah. Sorry, that was awkward. I just, uh, just so you know, I'm still fine, healthy, not infected. Hopefully they'll let us off the ship in the next week. That's the rumor anyways, but who knows? A and you were right. Cruises are terrible. I'm having a terrible time and I understand now why you didn't want to come. Cause you could be stuck on one for weeks, but no end in sight during a pandemic, which is terrifying. So, uh, well, I, I feel like I should address the elephant in the room. The, the, you know, the, the reason I'm calling. Because I know you're waiting for an answer. So, here we go. The answer is... I think so. And, and I know that's not romantic. When someone proposes to you, you're supposed to say, Yes! Or, yes, yes! A thousand times yes! And I know that we've been dating for ten years and this has been on your mind. Our minds in in the past and i know in some ways now would be a great time to get married it's the end of the world why not and if we have to be in isolation we should do it together love is a battlefield and i will always love you etc these are all great reasons to get married now and i do love you i want you to know that I just want to explain why I hesitated or why I needed a day before I answered you. So I'll try to explain. Okay, first of all, this isn't really the end of the world. This is just a very hard time and no one should be doing anything too rash just because the world is crazy and different right now. Well, if you told me you always wanted to go skydiving and you felt like you had to do it now because you didn't know if the world would be around in a year, well, then I'd advise against that because who's flying you? How well trained is the pilot? Uh, are parachutes even tested properly now? Furthermore, does your skydiving instructor have COVID? Because in all likelihood, you'd be strapped together like way closer than six feet apart. And I just read this tweet that said there is a whole aviation school in Alabama where everyone was infected. Okay, so clearly, if you said I wanna go skydiving, I would say no, even though that might be the last time you'd be able to skydive in a while. No, because I did the research, I know the risks, and I feel like the question you asked me, should we get married, deserves, you know, research and thought. <laughs> and I realize that comparison doesn't really work. I, I mean, both require a leap of faith. One literal, one a metaphor. <laughs> both require a parachute. I... I guess marriage doesn't really require a parachute. I... I'm just... I'm scared right now. I'm so scared. I'm more scared than I'd ever been. And I know marrying you should have been a no-brainer and I, I, I'm letting fear control me. I'm trying not to let it, but, but sometimes I do. So I, I'm sorry. I'm sorry for the delay. I'm sorry I didn't just say yes. As soon as I get back, let's find an online minister and... Oh, you're calling me. I, I well, never mind. Hello? Hey, I don't mean to put more pressure on you. I know you're really stressed and that you tend to think and you overthink things when you're stressed. And this is obviously like the most stressful time. So I'm sorry to blame this on you. And if you need more time. The answer is yes. Of course I do. I do. Oh. Wow. That's, that's so. You seem so sure of yourself. I expected a long explanation and can bring me. Not there. this time. I love you, Janie. Let's get married. Okay. Well, great. I love you too. Hey, I left you a message. Would you mind deleting it?
So I'm a kleptomaniac, like a for real one, not like, oops, I stole a pen one time off of Sandy's desk, lol, I'm such a klepto. No, I have legit diagnosis and everything. I steal stuff. It's just sort of what I do. Why? <laughs> I have no idea. It's not because I get a rush from doing it or because I can't afford what I'm stealing. It's just because I want to. No, scratch that. It's because I need to. So yeah, my therapist was not super excited about me coming on this cruise. But then I was like, whatever, what do you know about my life anyway, man? And he was like, literally everything. Then I was like, good point. But I came on the cruise anyway because I thought I could handle it. And then when I got here, I stole 13 forks, three spoons, a bottle of sunscreen, and this crummy watch that's either really expensive or it's from Walmart. I can't tell and I don't really care. Did it make me feel any better? Nope. Stop asking dumb questions. You're clearly missing the entire point of mental health. And then we heard about the quarantine, like the announcement over the loudspeakers, the meeting we had to go to. It was weird. Like we were hearing about the super contagious disease wall packed in together like sardines. <sighs> Dumb. I saw some magazine out of a lady's purse while she was talking to her husband about their kids. I guess they have like four and they were worried about them. And I guess I thought it really wasn't a big deal until we all got masks and gloves. We couldn't leave our rooms and everyone was crying and calling their families and stuff. And I was just like, well, crap. And then I looked in my dresser drawer and I saw all the stolen junk I had. And I was like, what am I doing? So I texted my therapist and I was like, I'm in a weird situation. I'm going to return stuff to people. And he was like, that's really good, Alex. And I was like, I don't know. For a moment, I felt a sense of relief, I guess because I steal stuff as a compulsion and it never makes me feel any better. But the prospect of returning it made me, I don't know, happy is not the right word. Calm is better and I never feel calm. So I returned everything, but no one even knows I did it. So I guess I like reverse stole it and probably nobody cares, but I do. And if I can make things a little better by returning all that random junk, guess I did something good, maybe. I don't know. I'm gonna have to talk to my therapist about this, provided I don't have the coronavirus and keel over and die in like three minutes. <laughs> Just kidding. Except not. I'm not kidding at all. So yeah, that's it. What are you doing in that big ship thing up there, Chloe? How long have they been up there for now? Two weeks, three? I just remember. You know, there's some folks up there who don't want us like to do time. Halfway anyway, what they got swimming pools, right? Ping pong tables? You think they're still swimming around? Bet just someone's peed in the pool. Huh? Playing ping pong. I played ping pong a couple times. Man, that stuff is so boring, they should use it as a sleep aid. Man, that's the perfect old age home for rich people. Bet you they don't want to get off. Bet they hitting people can't with their canes trying to stay on. Get off me. Get off of me. But you know what? They should kick their asses off and let on the homeless. Shoot. They say Brian those paint ping pong tables. All those chair deck thingies. You see my idea is that the rich people don't care about the poor people. Because they never met one. How many cabins do you think they got on that boat? Mix and mat, mix and mingle. Gotta mix things up for once. Who are those homeless folks on in the cabin? Each cabin with a rich dude. How many? How many beds you think they got in each room? Two doubles, maybe. Two homeless, two rich. I put them in quarantine for a month or two. No, no, no. Two homeless, one rich, and one filmmaker. Oh yeah, put that stuff out there. There'd be some changes made, right? Mix and match, baby. Change, brother. And it's all start right on that cruise ship. Shoot, if I know who to get a hold of, 
I put that idea out. Whoa. Whoa. Is there someone leaning on the rail waving at us? Hello, rich person! Invite me on! How you doing? Invite me on, dude! I got 17 years of stuff to lend you, brother! Hey. I'll come over there! And you drop down some steak! Let's get this thing on! Palamon? Are you there? Don't make me yell. I'm not supposed to be here. I'm supposed to be quarantined in my stateroom. I'm ready to swim home. I was a championship diver. Sort of. Third in the morning. Minnesota League. There were four of us, but I can do this. Just swim by and I'll catch you and I'll hold on and I'll feed you fish for the rest of your life. Or rather, my life, because you're a god and you'll live forever. And unfortunately, I won't. Palamon, I saw you in the tiny window. I saw you swim by. You and a whole bunch of your dolphin friends. It's called a pod, right? When you're in a flock of dolphins, it's called a dolphin pod. Well, see, I'm on this pod, this humongous pod. They call it a cruise ship, but really, it's just a virus ship and I'd rather not say any of it. Palamon, please come back. You're sworn to protect anyone on a sea journey and I need protecting. I need to get off this pod. Oh, come on. You could at least be impressed I know my mythology. And which got to see? I bet you thought you were forgotten. I'm born to tell you a secret. I think you're hot. Not just cute, but like blazing hot. Like you can be on one of those fireman calendars, you know? If you come any closer, I'll tell you some more secrets. Fine. Betray all you stand for. If I'm left here to sit around... I'll make sure I badmouth you all over social media. Fake god. Imposter. I'm sorry. I didn't mean that. I was just scared. And I need help to get off this death ship. I hear the crew. Palamon, come up for air. Palamon, I think I see you. Yes, I see you. Ready or not. My family is cursed. Do you believe that? Like, there is a Tompkins family curse? Seriously. Since I was a kid, I was reminded constantly that the family was not really living, rather waiting for the next one of us Tompkins to get smited. Now, here's the thing. The Tompkins family curse is a travel curse. Every generation, one of us finds ourselves waist deep in the mud of a transportational disaster. And now, it seems the cursed eye has set its gaze upon me to continue that tradition. The curse has haunted us for like ever. My great-great-great-grandfather, Elliot Tompkins, was one of the unfortunate souls who spent the winter of 1847 snowbound in the Sierra Nevadas while trying to migrate to California with a particularly notable party. Fortunately, being a stubbornly healthy man, he was never in danger of being, well, you know, but that is where the curse appears to have begun. Skip ahead, and you come to the story of my great-grandmother, Doris Tompkins. In 1912, Doris became the first Tompkins since colonial times to venture across an ocean. The outward journey went according to plan. She sailed to France, vacationed in Paris, crossed the channel to England, explored London, and then it was back home, on board the RMS Titanic. Yeah, she was on the Titanic. Luckily, for Doris. She was in the right place at the right time and found herself on the safety of a lifeboat, and eventually the Carpathia. But the curse was alive and well too. And then there's this. In 1971, my dad, Paul Tompkins, was flying to Seattle for Thanksgiving from Portland. It's like a 30 minute flight, right? Well, to hear him tell it, no sooner had the plane reached altitude than a well-dressed man in sunglasses claimed that he had a bomb and took all of the passengers hostage, politely requesting $200,000 and a parachute. Apparently, once he got what he wanted, he parachuted out of that plane, 200k in tow, and was never seen again. My dad said it was cool. My family said it was a curse. Now, 
Well, I guess it's my turn. Doing my part to fulfill the family destiny, stuck on a disease-ridden ship. I'm feeling fine. They treat us well. I've got Wi-Fi. I'm getting refunded, so I've got that going for me. My grandmother, who was raised in the Titanic stories, keeps emailing me about the curse. Her last note said, The next time you get any big ideas about taking a vacation, remember this. Even when I tell her that I'm fine and that there are no icebergs in sight, she still tells me that I'm cursed. But really, I'm okay. I mean, this is rotten. I am bored. I'm lonely. I'm talking to a loudspeaker. But I'm okay. It's not the dead of winter in the mountains. It's not a sinking ship. And as far as I know, it's not a hostage situation. And now that I think about it, maybe the Tompkins have had it wrong this whole time. Maybe the Tompkins aren't cursed. Maybe, maybe, maybe they overcome the odds in the face of adversity. Maybe they escape the peril. Maybe they fight when everyone else succumbs. Maybe they're survivors. Maybe I am too. Good morning, everyone. It's me, Mrs. Biedermeyer, and I'm here to give you an update on our big class trip. As you know, our class cruise to the Grand Tucky Basin was supposed to happen in six days. And though authorities have canceled school this week, I'm here to tell you not to worry. Classes are only canceled this week, and I just heard that there have been no traces of the virus in Grand Tucky. So pack your things, okay? Because this trip is most definitely happening. All right, everybody. See you next week. Hello, everybody. It's me, Mrs. Biedermeyer. You've probably heard by now that authorities have canceled class for the next month, and that includes all school trips. Yeah, I know this is hard. I mean, some of you have waited for this all year, but there's gotta be something we can do. Come heck or high water, we're still gonna have the best class trip ever, okay? Stay strong, everyone. I'll see you soon. Ahoy, mateys! It's me, Captain Biedermeyer, and I have good news. Our class cruise is happening, right now. Yeah, I know we can't leave our houses, but we can use the power of the internet to have our very own virtual cruise. Oh, here is our cruise ship. Isn't it wonderful? And look at all these interesting and worldly passengers. Oh, hello children. My name is Mr. Paws. I come from a nation with different customs than yours. <gasps> Mr. Paws, we just love your accents. <gasps> oh my goodness, everyone. There it is. The beautiful Grand Tucky Basin. The basin looks even better in person. Hey, let's get a selfie. Boy, am I tired. <laughs> Thanks for making this the best class trip ever. See you soon. Well, everybody, hope you're all doing okay since our virtual ship was quarantined. Apparently, Mr. Paws was infected with the virus. So just to be safe, I rounded up him and all the other passengers and set them on fire. I know this is hard. We're Americans, damn it. And we're going to be just fine. Before we know it, everything will be all back to normal again. I'll see you soon, okay? Adios, amigos. Can you feel that ocean breeze? Listen to those exotic walruses.
you know, I always wanted... Never mind. See ya. Oh, um, those are vitamins. Really. And they were expired. But you can't tell the difference. Why am I taking vitamins at the end of the world? Because they're multi-purpose. Many unknown purposes, and I might need their magical properties when I cross over to the other side. Like the coins the ancient Greeks would place on the eyes of a dead person to pay the fairy tollman to cross the river Styx. Coins on the eyes of the dead. It's grim, but I, I like it because it's a plan, and plans are good. It's like the ancient Egyptians mummifying their dead so their bodies could be preserved for the next world. That's really smart. And actually, that's what I'm going to do. Except, instead of cloth, I'm going to use the most precious, rare, and most valuable commodity in our society. TP. The chosen paper of the porcelain gods. So, consider this my last message. My last dialogue with the world. Although, for a dialogue, you need more than one person, and it's just me. So, I don't know what you'd call this. Monologue? No. That doesn't seem right. So, someone's receiving this, right? There's someone out there. I know you can't respond, but I know you're there, and that's comforting on some level. Yeah, totally comforting. <laughs> At the very least, someone will find this and know I existed. A digital time capsule, if you will. But, what's left to say? I already texted every person in my contacts. I sent them a very simple message. Thank you. Nothing specific, just thank you. It took me 78 minutes. Most people were confused. Some didn't respond, understandable. Others took it as an opportunity to engage. But a lot of people got it. They responded back, I love you. Thanking people is important. Maybe the most important thing we can leave behind. A simple gesture of kindness and gratitude. So, to anyone out there, and to anyone who might find this, I just want to tell you, thank you. And, more specifically, if you need a wipe, feel free to unwrap me. Alright, now it's time to disappear. Completely. It's time to say goodbye. Mm. I am gone. I have ever since I was a little girl. The deepness and mystery of the waters below me have always frightened me. When my friends came together to go to the beach, I was that weirdo chilling in the sand, never even touching the water. My family works in the ocean. My dad's a fisherman and my mom's a marine biologist. They would take me on fishing trips all the time and every single time I hated it. My family knows my fear of the ocean but they think if I just keep going out to sea 
I'll eventually climb out of my fear and begin to love the deep blue sea. So when they bought tickets for a cruise, they were ecstatic. Since cruises are supposed to be fun and relaxing, they thought it would help me rid myself of my fear once and for all. But there's something I haven't told them. I have terrible seasickness. I know I'm like can hide it from them by staying in a room by myself. But in a cruise, they want my full attention. 24-7. So you're probably like, Yo, Jenny, just telling you you got seasickness. Ain't no big deal. But the thing is, of course it's a big deal. My family lives and breathes the ocean. They would be so disappointed in me if they found out how sick the sea makes me feel. So now I'm stuck on this giant cruise ship. And at any moment, I could collapse from nausea with nothing but the sea around me. Yeah, this is definitely a perfect vacation. Ugh. Hey! Hi, everyone! Miss me back home? Miss you, we barely recognize you. Heh. Yeah, the sea's been rough on me. My eyes have gotten googly. I've sprouted fuzz. I seem to be made primarily out of textiles. You wouldn't think life on the ocean would turn a person to textiles, but look at me. I'm your worst dirty laundry nightmare. I'm your laundry come alive. Hey, who's that behind me? I'm your handler. You, you get it? Like, like, like hand? You're a real comic genius. Do you mind I'm telling everyone back home about my transformation? Nice. Becoming a single was the best thing to ever happen to you. If you were still a pair, I'd be wearing you. Get it? Like, a pair of socks? Like, uh, on my feet. You should really start laughing at my jokes. Because I own you. I literally bought you. I could do whatever I want with you. I could even throw you out of that porthole. No, you can't. It doesn't open. Seriously? It doesn't open? No. You know that. You know everything I do. Yeah, I do. Don't be sad. I'm your laundry. Come alive. That was a nice bit. And I appreciate your efforts, but we're trapped here. Not forever. Feels like forever. And I'm talking to a sock. Yeah. Well, who else you got? Makes complete sense. What if they never let us out? What if we're trapped here forever? Well, viruses have lifespans too. We just gotta outlive the sickness. Remember to do our, um, Bishops! <laughs> you look ridiculous. This was supposed to be a really fun cruise. I was supposed to meet new people. People I wasn't going to be able to run away from. Because I have this problem. I meet someone new, and I want to know them better. I 
and I suddenly can't say anything. It's... It's like I know I'm going to make an idiot of myself, so I just clam up. <laughs> Get it? Clam? But... But... But I thought... You know, if I'm... If I had to see the same people every day, and they couldn't run away from me as much as I could, maybe I could just... relax. And I maybe I wouldn't have to worry about acing first impressions, or second impressions even. And maybe I couldn't... Maybe I could... Maybe not be such an awkward kook. You? An awkward kook? No, I'm not meeting anyone. I'm trapped in this room. <laughs> With my awkward kook self. And don't tell me that this is an opportunity. Don't tell me that this is a way to make... Lemonade out of lemons. Because there are no lemons. There is no redeeming fruit in any of this. At all. I agree. I guess. Well, you just gotta... Roll with the waves. Feel them? Feel the waves. Beneath us. Rolling. They just keep going, don't they? Yeah. No one tells you how small these staterooms are. I can just turn around without bumping into the bed, and the toilet doubles as a shower. Which is good, because we ran out of TP days ago. I don't even know what time it is anymore. See, I used to have an intense, pressing OCD need to know the time all the time, because my Apple Watch, but then I dropped it out the porthole. And it got eaten by a shark. There are a lot of sharks out there. The sharks keep circling. It's like they know we don't have long. Someone said they were nurse sharks, and that even when their stomachs are empty, nurse sharks are harmless. But I don't know who to believe anymore. The tour group from Idaho took the mouse hostage yesterday. The costume, not the kid who plays him. At least, I hope they let the kid go. Cause I think they're planning on burning the mouse in effigy. I'm sure they're gonna set the ship on fire, but we're surrounded by water, so we should be all right, right? <sighs> I've been spending my time meditating. There's no TV. And I've read all the People magazines I stole from the store. I feel a little bad that I cut them out with my cuticle scissors and pasted them to the wall with toothpaste. These are my friends now. Meghan Markle, Billie Eilish, that one serial killer, Cher. I feel really close to them. I wrote them a song last night after I ate old mushroom pizza and got high from food poisoning. <clears throat> it's a tragedy not to have an exit strategy. Just a menagerie of people magazine celebrities. No one ever let me sing before. Probably a good thing. Good thing. No one ever. It's happening. The nightly wilding. See, 
I've been sheltering in place, but the tour group from Idaho, they went feral fast. Grabbed the finger paints out of the daycare, got down to their skivvies, and started painting each other wild colors. Then danced on the captain's table on the sun deck. From the howling, I think they just discovered that finger paint doesn't have any SPF in it. I'd offer my prescription kind, but it's expired. It made me look like I was wearing vanilla frosting, so I never used it. Maybe I should leave it out for those crazy Idahoans. <gasps> Maybe if I do that, they won't make me walk the plank like they did to that group from Florida.